required to register once for this course and get one credit. However, if your uh, major is in translation, then you are required to attend this seminar all the time through your studying period um, at USF. Okay. Um, are we recording this? It says it started. Started recording. Okay. So uh, we do not have a lot, lots of students present today. Maybe it's uh, it's the beginning of the, uh, it's the first week of the semester, and our students are really busy on determining which courses is they going to finally take. You know, and um, you know, facing some parking issues because so many people come into the campus. But this will be recorded, and the requirements to the graduate students uh, needs to be um, monitored and fulfilled. So the recorded seminar will go to all the students later by email. And today we actually have uh, different agenda items. And a bit before that, I will introduce myself first. My name is Yu Zhang. I'm a professor um, in the Civil and Environmental Engineering Department. I'm also uh, the director of the <clears throat> National Institute for Congestion Reduction, which is a national UTC um, hosted at Qatar. And I'm also a program director of the Advanced Air Mobility at Qatar. So uh, this semester, I'll be leading this seminar. When I say leading, means inviting the speakers, moderating the seminar, and also you know, encourage the students to ask the questions, to have more interactive, um, interactive communication with our speakers. Um, so today's agenda will include, we have two um, um, professionals, translation professionals uh, from uh, Florida Department of Translation, FDOT District 7 office, right? which is uh, uh, just across the street from our campus. So their office is on McKinley Drive. And the purpose of them being here is to introduce the professional engineer training program of FDOT and um, give more details about that and you know, how our students, both senior undergraduate and graduate students could be involved into the program and start the career in this fantastic public agency. Now, the next agenda item, I will invite the president of IT student chapter, Diva, to introduce the uh, ITE and introduce the student chapter and how the students could register and become a member of the ITE. So those are two major um, items. And in next time, when we have time, we will also have another couple of student organizations, including uh, WTS, which is a women's in transition seminar, and also Florida Airport Council. The presidents of those two student chapters will come over to talk about, introduce their chapters. And we have president of the bike clubs at USF join us today, and she will introduce that club. And if you're riding a bicycle, maybe you will consider joining the club and have fun together. So, okay, so we have three major uh, items for today. And the first of all, I will invite uh, Carton, Miss Carton Watkins, and also Greg Dees from FTOT to introduce the PE training program. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. Can you um, on the screen? Is it better? Can you see me? Uh, hey, uh, good afternoon, guys. Um, thank you for um, having us. Um, my name is Greg Dees. Um, I have a lot of nostalgia walking through this uh, building. I actually worked at Cutter um, back in 2001, uh, my first job on campus. Um, so I'm a USF alumni. I got a bachelor's and master's degree in structures um, back in 2003, 2004, uh, working with uh, Dr. Greg Mullins. Um, but um, now I'm with the Department of Transportation. So I've worked with DOT for almost 17, well, a little over 17 years now, and uh, wanted to um, I'll tell you guys about that experience and how I started through the uh, PE training program. Uh, with me today, um, Karen Watkins, she works um, in our uh, director's office. Uh, so she does all, everything that we need to make our uh, division successful uh, from both the administration and leadership side. So glad she's here and we have some handouts for y'all. Before I get started though, I do want to make this slightly interactive. When you guys hear the word DOT, what comes to mind? Well, mainly roads and highways. Roads and highways. That's, that would be absolutely correct. Anything else? Any positive, negative? People who take care of transportation. 
And you guys are giving all the kind answers. I appreciate that. <laughs> So, and no one's ever called to complain to the new team. All right. Well, here the reason I ask is when I was sitting in this, you know, we all are. Um, I had the same questions. I really had no idea uh, what the department did. Um, so, really, we wanted to explain a little bit about DOT and then explain about an opportunity you would have once you graduate uh, to join uh, what is I what I think is probably the best way to launch your career if you're interested in transportation engineering. So uh, DOT is a um, executive agency of the state, so we are a, um, a public agency. Um, we have an annual budget around ten billion dollars a year. That makes us one of the larger, um, the larger light items on the budget. And as part of it, that means we have a lot of influence as far as employing engineers, not just for the DOT, but also our consultant um, partners. Uh, the department's about six thousand employees throughout the state. Uh, we're organized in different districts. Uh, District 7 is the Tampa, the Tampa Bay um, area, which is literally within walking distance. If it was a little cooler, I think I could have talked here and I'd walk in over here, but uh, but it really is just on the other side of the uh, signal there where the Embassy Suites is. Um, so very close. Um, I didn't go far when I um, when I left USF, a little bit of a homebody. Um, but I've been with the department for, like I said, 17 years, and I started my career in the um, a training program. Now, I didn't know what, really what DOT um, what DOT was or what they did. But, um, you know, when you look at the um, maintaining the transportation, transportation infrastructure for the third most populated state in the country, there's a lot that goes, a lot that goes into that. Um, and so what I mean is you have the planning side, you have um, uh, project development, environmental studies, coordination with FHWA um, federal agencies, you have design, you have survey, you have right-of-way, you've got to buy property to widen roads. I mean, property in Florida is hard to come by, especially in the areas where our roads are the most congested. Construction, that's the area that I work in now, and then uh, maintenance. So it's a very broad brush. And so whether or not you're in transportation structures, water resources, um, environmental, really there's something in it for everybody uh, working, for, uh, uh, working for the DOT. Um, and that's where the training program uh, comes in, in my mind, and again, maybe I'm biased, but I would say it's the best way to start a career um, in transportation. So what happens, the training program is a four-year program and is designed to culminate in obtaining your professional engineer's license. I don't know how you guys, probably all of you are familiar with the EI or the FE exam. Um, we encourage you all to take that if you haven't already. Um, that is the first step toward getting your PE license, which really opens doors um, when you become a professional engineer in, in our industry. Um, and what the training program does, it allows you to look, you cycle through all those areas. So you spend about a year and three months to a year and a half, depending on your track, going through each of those areas. So you really get to, not only do you get to meet a lot of people, but you really hone in on what you think you want to do. You might think you're a structures guy. That's where I started. I was a, I was a bridge guy. I, when I went to the bridge inspection group, I spent extra time there and ended up starting my career doing bridge inspection, bridge rehab, moved over to construction, been doing that for 10 years. I wouldn't have known about those things had I not gone through uh, the program. And so working for a, um, a public agency has numerous benefits. Um, secure job it is uh, you go to one location. A lot of times when you go to work for a private sector job, you're going to where the work is here. We have a centrally located office. Um, you know, the benefits are incredible. Um, and it really is just a really good way to um, uh, get yourself out there and, uh, and, and learn about the industry. And if it doesn't work, you can always go to, um, you can get a private sector job really in this economy whenever you want. But the opportunities to do public sector, uh, they don't, don't come too often. And uh, just as a really, a truly neat program. And I could go on and on, but I know I don't want to take up a ton of your time. We do have um, some uh, brochures with QR codes, and if you guys want to reach back out afterwards, we'd love to talk specifics about you know what your career path might look like. And I know y'all. I think this class is a graduate class, so I don't know where y'all are at in terms of your program. Um, but you know we'll have advertisements coming for this fall semester as well as for a spring. Uh, so be a good opportunity to look back for the uh, career fair, which I think is not. September. September. Okay, September 21st, 22nd. Um, 
And that's really, I'll stop talking and see if you guys have any um, any questions or anything else you want me to chat about. Yeah, we don't have many students present today, but for those who just joined, um, do you mind to introduce yourself and mention, you know, are you graduate students, which you are, what you are interested in working on at USF? Um, I'm actually, I'm an engineering in concentration of transportation. And uh, sorry, but uh, we, we just lost, uh, we got lost on our way here because we just couldn't find where it's better than before. <laughs> <laughs> Is this your first semester? Yes. yes. Ah, first week at USF. Yeah, 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 that's right. That's right. Okay. And everything seems to. Uh -huh. It's actually fun. <laughs> Are you an international student? Or? Uh, actually, we are, uh, my dad is American. My mom is Lebanese. We used to live in Lebanon for the past a week, long, for a long time. But in, uh, we just visited here from time to time. But uh, we are American. Okay, great, great. Welcome. Welcome to yes, ESA. He's my friend, so it's <laughs> <laughs> I'm Anthony. Uh, I'm a graduate in civil engineering, and my concentration is uh, transportation. Yeah, it's my first uh, semester here at USF. So, where you come from? Uh, Lebanon. Lebanon. Yeah, we had our PS in Lebanon, and now we are continuing our, uh, our MS in USF. Great, great. Welcome, both. I think online we also have. I saw the name of Mary. After I say you could introduce yourself, I think my student just got off. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's okay. I think that, do you have so what Greg just mentioned is the professional engineer training program for our public, uh, public agency um, FDOT for the conversation. I know you just came from another country, maybe you're not familiar with um, FDUT, but you must have your own translating agency in your country, right? So I don't know how much you know about what they do. Um, so for what Greg has mentioned, do you have any questions? And Deva as well, do you have any questions for Greg and Karen? Can you talk more about the internship opportunity and how the students Utilize it just to Yeah, sure. Uh, the DOT does have a number of uh, internship opportunities that are part time. Um, the easiest way to get there is just to Google search FDOT internships, and the first link that pops up will take you to a website, has a map of the state. Click on the Tampa area, District 7, and there'll be a list. Last I checked, I think there was two. I think there was two opportunities advertised on there. and. Um, one of them, I think, was in maintenance. The other one was in planning. So you can get uh, you can get that opportunity. Um, and we've had, um, in fact, we just had a um, an intern who left us to pursue his master's degree here uh, full time. And uh, you know, and we're hoping that he'll end up coming back um, as well. We've had, we've had multiple interns that have been um, have been successful um, in that way. I think all the information internship or opening of the training will come to our department and it will be disseminated to all, all our students. Yeah. And also, I think we mentioned the benefits, right? Benefits at our agency is incredibly good, which also include the cover by the six credits tuition. Yes, two classes a semester. Yes. Two classes a semester, which means it could be four classes for a year. Correct. Yeah, it's very Masters as well. Right. So if the undergraduate students join this program, then they can take courses here and get to either certificate or get a master's degree eventually. If master students join, you can continue taking courses and then later if you're interested, you can pursue the PhD degree. Right? So those are fantastic continuous educational opportunities for the employees of the other agency. And another benefit if you happen to have student loans. You work for the state for 10 years and you're eligible for public service loan forgiveness. So, you know, loans wow. are And a fun fact for the two of you I worked at USF for 23 years and I started with my boss was Chufi Mune, 
he was from Lebanon, um, okay. professional engineer. He is the director of physical plant now. Yes. So. Uh, for a professor, a student alone, yes. when you say after 10 years of service, yes, you doing this, but during these 10 years, you're making the payment. You have to make a payment. You do. So you make minimal. Well, you can, especially <laughs> students, right? You know, yeah. so, but it's deferred until you start your job. But yes, it's based on your income. So but, um, our PE training program starts out at 60000 a year. So you know, then for four years, you're guaranteed at least a 5% raise based on your performance, but I've never seen anyone not get that 5% every year. So Yeah, it used to be the salaries of the department lag behind a little bit. That's a lot of ground that's been gained uh, when it comes to that. But then when you look at, for a position, look at a total compensation package, um, mm -hmm. you know, for instance, like the tuition assistance is unbelievable, but your vacation time, your benefits, work-life balance, knowing that you know, we've had students who went back to school because the building was so close that they wanted to do a class in the middle of the day, worked out with their supervisor, they came back here, worked a little late that day. Um, we have flexibility that is pretty much pretty much unheard of um, in the um, industry. And a huge benefit I know for me, I have kids that are y'all's ages, but insurance. And right now, most of you are probably on your parents' insurance. My kids are, but once you hit 26, you have to, you know, venture off on your own and get your own insurance, but you're covered and the insurance and the benefits are amazing. So I know my package is worth about $38,000 on top of the salary that I make. Why is this thing for young kids? They don't, they don't have sense about the That's <laughs> <laughs> They're your age when they come in. Um, I'm the coordinator for the program. So when they come in, I'm trying to tell them, they're like, we don't care about it. We just want to make money. I'm like, but there'll be a time. And now we have one that just got married. So he's taking family. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's really. Yeah, you know, when you're over 45, 50, you think about all retirement. So yeah, right? That's right. Pension plan. I love that pension plan. I'll, yeah. I've got six more years to have my full 30 years. And then that means for the rest of my life, I will have a set amount on top of my Social Security that I'll get every month. And that's with a pension plan. So it's amazing for the best to have a state job. Yeah, or whatever, how long you can live. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's great. You know, that's why a lot of people go to public sector to work for up to eight years, right? Now, Absolutely. At least eight years. And then they can consider stay or consider move to another job because now they have secured kind of um, income for the requirements. Right? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. I'm an urban regional planning student here at USF, and uh, uh, I'm hoping, you know, I wanted to write a letter to the FDOT to, uh, you know, think of a, making a walkability and bikeability department, you know, having every, well, especially the regular U.S. federal highway system. I'm not talking about the interstates, I'm talking about the light shields, you yeah. uh, know. Yeah, having at least two-way protected bike lanes separated by a median and uh, for rural segments, a uh, multi, well, a uh, pedestrian trail on one side and a five-foot, well, seven-foot regular concrete sidewalk on the other side, you know, both sides. Because there are cross-country walkers and bikers. And no, you're absolutely right, and um, you know the department has several initiatives. When we go to look at um, um, multimodal type facilities, you know, for instance, if we have a study on Fowler Avenue right now. That's we're looking at buffered bike lanes as a um, as a potential for the section here from 30th Street to 275. Um, our Complete Streets Initiative, uh, working especially with the City of Tampa, um, to the, those urban areas make it more walkable, more bikeable. And just about every rural road we build nowadays, we include a multi-use path on one side of the sidewalk um, on the other. So the focus has really shifted more from the car centric to more of a multimodal, uh, multimodal approach, um, including, you know, that's working with our local um, municipalities and counties that be on board as well, right? Because it has to be a continuous facility. Uh, we're looking at sidewalk gap studies right now. You know, where do we have sidewalks that are missing that we can connect and um, and create those opportunities for um, if you choose you know you see a lot of people now on electric scooters they're on um, you know e-bikes um, so the demand is certainly is certainly growing um, and yeah we those are the types of opportunities you would get 
work in the department. We do have, you know, we don't have a department, but we do have bike head coordinators in two different areas on the operation side of the planning side, who's that's their job is to um, is to increase that type of um, that type of ability. I also aspire to be a historic preservation activist and there were two historic bridges built in 1949 in Polk County that were demolished and replaced with a design build bridge. Uh, yeah, all because of lack of shoulders, but the lanes were wide enough for. Well, the bridge could have been repurposed for pedestrians and bicyclists. Yeah, uh, yeah that's, those are good points. Um, we actually, if you do get a, a, the DOT created a manual on historic bridges throughout the state. If you Google search it, FTT historic bridges, um, I think Steve Nolan is the one who um, created that. And so we do have a, um, you know, interest in the same uh, preservation, uh, same preservation piece at the same time. When you get those opportunities, let's say you have another bridge, um, the department doesn't want to maintain extra infrastructure to, that doesn't necessarily guide, they would rather build a new bridge that guides on to, um, that will be more durable and whatnot. But if we do, we have partnered with local counties that they want to take over ownership of a, of a structure like that. Um, there's been examples of that in the past where that's worked. It's just finding somebody to own, to own that facility uh, in accordance with their mission and not, you know, the department's mission may not always coincide uh, for things of that nature. Yeah, I'm hoping to start an I01C3 nonprofit starting as an organization called the Florida Historic Bridge Preservation Foundation, you know. Yeah. And one of my biggest focus is on restoring the historic character of the regular U.S. federal highway system since it was built in 1926. And it's such an amazing feat of engineering. Most people think of amazing feats of engineering as the interstate highway system, but it, the, the U.S. highway system, regular one, was the first national highway system in the world for modern automobile and truck traffic. Yeah. Well, you got um, the Kennedy Drawbridge built in 1912. Oh, yeah, cool. Gorgeous structure. How in 1912 they, they managed to develop a bridge that would open and close. Courtney Campbell Causeway, when it was originally built, you know, very early uh, in the teens as well. Um, so yeah, we have lots of information um, on that. And we do have, um, it's not in the Tampa office, but our central office, we do have a, a coordinator who de deals with all the, I forget the acronym, but there's, a, but when we deal with the um, historic nature and all of our planning studies, that's one of the requirements uh, for us is to account for that. In fact, you know, it's not, um, it's not highways, but we had a project a few years ago when we uh, built I-4 by the depth and interchange. We actually had to, we moved historic homes instead of um, demolishing them. We actually paid to have them moved from their locations where we did the right way um, to uh, preserve them. And one of our recent graduates from the PD training program is our FBOT president of our bicycle club. And um, he was raced all over the world and retired from it and then got his master's from the University of Florida. And so maybe I can put the two of you up because we have a club over there as well. Well, we've had joint rides before, actually. We had a ride that started at Cutter, oh, at David the Beauty Plant. We established that. I also have a part time master student who's your employee mm -hmm. office. Is that Jason? Brian Porter? Porter, yes. Yeah, yeah, he he's getting his master's. Yeah, he's getting his master, and he's involved in our drone projects. Yes. So basically, they're using drones to collect the traffic data and exactly. the incident detection and management. It's great. Yes, he's yeah. just got his PE license and he graduates from the program in January. Uh -huh. so. yeah. That's a good example, you know, as become a part of the PE program and then grow your career in this uh, public agency. I'll add with one thing. I, this this was lost on me early in my career, but now that I'm in there a few years, I appreciate it a little bit more. Does the opportunity to influence um, policy and decisions and from a public sector point of view, you really do have more say in how something gets built than if you're, say, on the private side, you're competing for a contract with a public owner who creates a scope and says, it's your point, I want to build this interstate this way. Well, the consultant kind of 
does what the department says. But with, with regard to actually setting a vision and a purpose, um, one of the things I enjoy most about working for the DOT is being able to set the tone and, and move the vision forward that creates that safer transportation system, reduces congestion. Um, it's a very unique opportunity um, compared to just conventional private company who they, they partner with us. And I'm not saying those guys don't share a vision, but they share it for a different reason, right? They got to keep the lights on somehow. So that's. And Greg won't brag on himself, so I'll brag on him that he's in charge of the Out of Franco Bridge. Is there any way the the old northbound span can become a pedestrian trail? So here, let me answer another question first. So the new bridge we're building includes a 10 foot wide pedestrian trail that will be connected eventually all the way from um, something upper Tampa Bay Trail. The, the, the trail there that goes alongside Courtney Campbell will connect and will connect over to Pinellas and it will have little alcoves where you can have benches and you can rest. The problem with the old bridge um, is the fact it's a 60 year old structure sitting in salt water. Um, those that tend not to be a good combination when it comes to maintenance. So that bridge has really reached the end of its service life. So as far as being economically feasible to maintain it, it's probably not, uh, probably not something we'd be able to do. Yeah, I heard that the bridge is rated four. It still can be open to pedestrians, but it's not closed until it gets to level two. What happens? Um, are you talking about MBI ratings? Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's, here's the problem when you come to a, a concrete bridge, and I'm getting way off topic here, has no real failure mechanism. It is safe until it's not. And so the department can't, we can't say a day that where a bridge was going to, is going to fail, but there's the probability that increases. And so we would want to maintain a level of service on a bridge if we're open it to public traffic. As engineers, you know, we would, that's our main objective as civils is to maintain public infrastructure safely. And those, that would be, that would cost, you know, um, large sums of money in a given year that could be used for other transportation improvements. So it's a balance as to what we have to do. I know we're running out of time. I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's okay. It's okay. But I just wanted to say, Greg, can we invite you back sometime in spring to speak if you talk about the bridge project that you are leading and also maybe some other, you know, general ideas about the bridge construction mm -hmm. and management. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, well, thank you. Okay. And all the cards here, we have the QR code here. Um, my email is also once you click on, you can see it. So you'll be emailing me any questions and like you again, I'd love to have some of you working with us eventually. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, so um, if you have more questions, feel free to contact Karen, and she's in charge of the PE training program at FDOT District 7. So now I will invite Diva to talk about the ITE student chapter. You can see a poster there with all the officers and the two faculty members. One of them actually is myself. And another one is Judy uh, Goffrey, and she's the senior researcher at Cutter. And then she's very active in ITE. And I believe she's representing the grand section, I think, the southeast section right now. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Divya and I am the current USF IT president and I'm here to uh, hopefully motivate you all to join our uh, student chapter. So IT stands for the Institute of Transportation Engineers. Uh, 
Um, as the new students or students who just joined in, you might have this question, what is IT? As I explained, it stands for Institution of Transportation Engineers, but we are a student chapter. So um, I would start by telling it's an international organization, mainly run by professionals. Um, we are just like a small part of it, student chapter trying to bridge the gap between students and professionals, trying to help them uh, get jobs and network with actual professionals. This is our nice logo. And, uh, I'm sorry, uh, this is not just a logo, this is a video uh, made by our uh, previous vice president, Brian. Uh, which would give you an idea of what IT has done yet and what it's capable of doing in the future for you. So I'll just play it for you guys. IT is a nationally recognized professional transportation organization comprising of over 13,000 members and is represented in 90 countries. These IT organizations are composed of student and professional engineers, all with a dedicated focus in transportation. USF ITE comprises of predominantly transportation students enrolled in the USF College of Engineering. Our activities include involvement with professional parent organizations, which includes International ITE, Florida ITE, and the local Tampa Bay ITE through professional development, professional involvement, and social events. To update students on current work in the transportation field, every conducts seminars where transportation experts relay insight on existing and future work. Not only do students have the opportunity to listen, but can engage with students while enjoying free food and The typical engineering student only sees a lecture hall. However, USF IT offers field trips to expose students to real-world transportation projects and agencies which will create a connection to what is taught in class to practical application. In the past, USF IT has taken trips to the I-4 Ultimate Expansion, testing facilities for the FAA, traffic management centers, and students experience freeway management operations from transportation practitioners. IT also provides a gateway to take part in international and national conferences, such as the International Transportation Research Board annual meeting held in Washington, D.C., where students get to present on the international level and network with transportation professionals across the world. The IT Annual Conference, which is held in major cities across the U.S. It includes the National IT Traffic Bowl and National Transportation Technology Journal, where students have the opportunity to compete against other schools on the national level. The I-3 Transportation Showcase, which is held across Florida. Students can demonstrate their research to regional agencies and leading transportation practitioners. USF IT student chapter not only focuses on student and professional interactions, but creates an environment for students to thrive with their colleagues through informal social events and student competitions, both of which offer free food and refreshments. Additionally, students can obtain cash prizes for the competitions and additional awards for competing. Involvement for social event preparation is not limited to IT officers, but any IT member can join in on the action. Students volunteering to help prepare for our social events may find new friendships and lasting memories. The IT student chapter will also recognize your hard work. By getting involved in our chapter, USF IT will help you get recognition which will benefit your employment credentials. After an exciting and clinical year, IT also provides a bridge between students and local engineering agencies for potential employment by conducting career fairs. Hello everyone, my name is Kamala Mohanda. I am a member of IDE student chapter at the University of South Florida, Tampa. I attended the last uh, student leadership summit hosted by the USF, and in the value of that, as part of the event, I met the representatives from PSTA, and after exchanging our views, I was offered an internship position to work as a project management intern. I work on capital projects ranging from $5,000 to $45 million, and we thank you for IDE student leadership summit and PSTA for providing me a wonderful opportunity of this internship and uh, connecting me to my things and career. Thank you. If you've not reached that time to 
get your job done. IT also provides speed interviews with professional engineers. So better build your resume and your interview skills. Thank you for watching that video. Uh, that video pretty much said it all, but I'll just go ahead and share some more things with you. Benefits of joining ITE, definitely professional development, a lot of field trips, conferences, uh, scholarship announcements. We have a lot of scholarships coming in this semester and the next semester. Um, so if you join IT on Bulls Connect, you will be getting all these announcements via emails and be able to uh, use the opportunity, um, mock interviews, volunteering opportunities. These are some of the past field trips that we did, uh, went to NASA, uh, we recently went to the TMC, um, Port of Tampa, Tampa Airport. These are some of the upcoming scholarships which uh, the USF IT will be sending out announcements for once we know the exact date. Uh, that's why you should sign up for USF ITE. Uh, you can scan this QR code um, if you are interested in applying for the Transportation Georgia Brush Scholarship, which is due September 25. I would suggest everyone, even if you feel like you're not a strong candidate to apply for it because you don't know until you get it. This is another scholarship, which again, I'll be sending out the email for, but just for reference, you can scan this QR code. Another award. Uh, so these are some of the competitions that you can take part in as a part of USF ITE. We recently took part in Traffic Bowl in which uh, he participated with me. Uh, we have a lot of student poster competitions uh, through which you get the opportunity to showcase the work that you're currently doing, your, any projects that you've been working on, and also get the opportunity to get a cash award. Um, something that's not here is the SSA, which is the Safe Systems Approach Competition, uh, which I am currently working on with uh, fellow students and Jason, who is guiding, guiding us, um, make a video. Luncheons. We uh, IT has a lot of luncheons. Uh, the FLP or IT stands for Florida Puerto Rico ITE and Greater Tampa IT. These are all professional organizations, like at professional level. So as a student, you get the opportunity to go to these luncheons and network. Some of the nice pictures. Uh, the first picture is from a recent mock interview that we had. Um, that's me. Oh, this is uh, something we did. This is also very recent. We volunteered um, at the warehouse. Um, it was my first time volunteering, and I uh, would suggest all of you to do it. We are planning to organize one more uh, coming October. This is the QR code, uh, which will take you to uh, the Pulse Connect directly where you can join our email list. And it's free for all the students. And we have free pizzas every Friday here. So for those who couldn't attend today, this is something you're missing. Um, and this is Jody's email, my email, vice president's email, our, our secretary's email. You can email us anytime if you have any questions regarding IT or anything in general. Thank you so much. Uh, and now I would give this back to Dr. John. Yeah. Um, did you did you mention who the, uh, how the student can be involved? Yeah. yeah. So we have the book connect. Is that book connect? Okay. All right. Thank you, Diva, for this. And we will have uh, Katerina with us. I'm glad that the name and also the um, the name of the bicycle club here. So she's the president of USF Bicycle Club, and I'm glad to have you here, and you know to introduce your club and how students could be involved. And I also want to mention Jason Jackman, and he's our bicycle guru. Uh, 
at Qatar, and he has done a lot of work in the pedestrian and bicyclist in related research, as well as the uh, community outreach and the training, etc. So glad to have you here too. Thank you very much, and I'm just going to do a quick introduction on myself. I'm a bike club uh, faculty advisor, uh, been the advisor since 2010, and had many presidents and officers throughout the club. It's been fun. We've built the club really just each year. We do something different, and one thing I just want to say before passing the mic over to Katarina is that the ITE student chapter it would be a great partner for the bike club. We do community pickup. Um, I guess trash pickup along Fletcher. We adopted the road, but it's currently in limbo and we could call it the ITE bike club adoption road so we can make it official this year if you want. Um, we can do a community cleanup. It's really a great event. Other than that, um, at the end of this presentation, there will be, it's only five slides, but uh, there'll be a QR code where you can take a questionnaire, a bike pet, bicycle and pedestrian questionnaire. Uh, please do so, and um, just hopefully it's a great semester, and thank you for having us. I'm going to pass it to the president. Here you go. Hello, I'm uh, Katarina. Uh, a little bit about myself. Um, I'm third year at USF majoring in cybersecurity, uh, and I actually just joined the club uh, last spring semester, um, and I quickly kind of fell in love with it. Uh, I've always been biking. Uh, my dad was actually president of the bike club back in the 1990s, I believe. So kind of history uh, there. And then I met Leah Mar, who was the past president. Um, and then I thought I'd take it over. Um, so yeah, you can follow us on Bulls Connect. Um, we have an active page there. I've put a couple of our tabling events up there. We have an Instagram, which is at USF Bicycle Club. Um, that's probably where I'll be posting uh, most, but yeah, definitely follow us on Bulls Connect. Um, and then, yeah, these are our current officers. Um, I'm the president. And then uh, Sam is our treasurer, and she's also part of the motorcycle club, too, which is also part of Cutter. So if you're interested in motorcycles, do that, too. Uh, and then, yeah, Liamar was our past president. I think he's a graduate student now, so he'll be involved in that. Jason, our advisor. Um, and so, yeah, um, our mission is just uh, to have fun. You know, I like to you know, ride my bike a lot, so I wanted to find a community um, for all of us to enjoy um, a similar hobby. And then also what comes with that is um, the bike safety part of it. So um, just, yeah, keeping, you know, the surrounding areas of USF bike safety and pedestrian friendly. And then, yeah, so we do group rides, a lot of campus events. Actually, our first event is going to be next Wednesday, August 30th. Um, in this building 207 uh, at 530. So we're having our first bike club meeting. If you're interested, um, we would love to have you. And then, yeah, Jason talked about our volunteer cleanup. Um, and then, yeah, just a lot of group rides and bike safety. <laughs> and then if you want to take our safety quiz, uh, this is just to test your knowledge um, of if you know about certain bike laws. So you can scan that if you'd like. Any question? Does that include the e-bike or just the um, bike? Actually, somebody asked about that because we went to the rec fest and we did tabling there and somebody actually had an e-bike <laughs> and I was like, yeah, you can join us. So <laughs> it includes it. Yes. Sure. So uh, I, I went yeah, recently when I go biking, you know, Mm -hmm. The last time I did was about two years ago, and uh, I was biking along the Polk Parkway frontage roads. So. Okay. And uh, climbing up inclines is hard, especially the overpass over the the CSX railroad. Mm -hmm. It kind of had a high gradient, you know. But mm -hmm. uh, I like biking, really, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, of course I bike on other roads such as, you know, around Lake Hunter and, you know, my hometown Lakeland and 
but finding a bin clients is hard. You know. Yeah, I, I agree. I don't know. My bike has multiple speeds, so I just kind of put the thing down on it. It's good, but yeah, definitely climbing uphill. It's hard, even in Florida. I'd like to add too that, yeah. With e-bikes, it's a great question. I think it's bringing more people into the biking mix. We're able to have more people biking that maybe you mentioned the incline. E-bikes, assisted bikes uh, can really help with that. E-bikes, doing the incline, you have um, maybe older bicyclist out there and never thought, hey, I can't ride bikes anymore. It's just not my thing. But now e-bikes e is including everyone. Um, so there's a lot of positives to e-bikes and bringing e-bikes to the club, we're, we're good with that. With modern cars, there's power steering. Couldn't there be power pedaling without the need to have a, be able to recharge a bike, you know? Yeah, it's not a bad idea. hydraulic fluid, you know, be able to, it's the same technology and power steering. Yeah. Yeah. I'm. If if I'm pretty sure maybe there's there's something out there that they're they're putting together to as a rechargeable mechanism for sure. I, I wouldn't doubt it. I mean, well, like, this wouldn't need electricity. This would, you know, yeah, yeah, just involve hydraulic. Yeah. Compression. Something to look into. I mean, it's endless with the bike club. Yeah. Definitely. Talk to you soon. All right, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Okay, um, so as I mentioned, uh, maybe before you join us, um, so this is a called Friday seminar to the general public, but as well as a course, graduate research seminar. So as a master's student and PhD student, you are required to register once in your whole study period, but you are required to attend all the time. So um, also starting from this, this semester, we're going to request the students to attend in person. I'm going to discuss with the department to see how we can better enforce this. OK, because we do have a whole list of speakers already you know, scheduled for this semester and they will bring uh, the speakers will come from industry and you know the the uh, universities outside of Florida and in Florida and also you know from public agencies so they will bring lots of expertise and bring their real world experiences you know to our students so it's fantastic learning opportunities and it will also help students to expand your um, professional network so we're gonna I will discuss with Diva as well as department chair to see how we could better enforce uh, the in-person attendance of the students to this uh, seminar. And uh, before we end, any other questions from audience today? Okay, this course, if you register, you're supposed to attend every time. But of course, even you're not registered, you're supposed. And then for the for the students who registered, um, I will look into how interactive involved of the students during seminar. For example, um, ask questions to the speakers, right? And always be you know on time, et cetera, et cetera. So there will be no quits, no assignments, but the active involvement and participation will be the one to evaluate the students. Okay, and uh, what like area it shows on Canvas on uh, basis? I think it should be not uh, uh, graded with letters like A, B, C, D. It will be more like uh, satisfied, you know, so or. Um, it's S review, mm -hmm. right? Satisfactory, um, satisfactory. Yes, yes, yes. Is it going to be another unit of GPA? Is it going to have any? I, I don't think so. I don't think so. Yeah, it's just the one credit required by the department for the graduate students. Because you are a new here, I don't know. So it will, it will uh, be shown as it is a one credit course that we will take, but without a grade, right? 
Um, actually, there it would not be an official course on the campus, but on the campus we do have uh, something set up for all the graduate students. I don't know if you are already there. So the department actually set up something and I have all the graduate students there and for faculty members and a department, if we have something like a job opening or if we want to recruit researcher um, assistants or if something, then we will post it there. So, so all the graduate students will get the notification of the seminar there as well as from ITE. Yeah, but you will not have to enroll every semester to a course, uh, official course on campus, only once. Okay, perfect. So, for example, if our master's degree is 30 credits, mm -hmm. so uh, we still have, for example, to do this class, so we still have many more credits. So it, uh, it's going to be counted. In, in it, it will be counted towards towards your 30 coursework. Well, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Can yes. you help us uh, to show us how we can register once? Uh, Diva can help you. Okay. Yeah. You can find the name of the course on campus and yeah. register for that. Right? Yeah. And just once, if you do not register this semester, it's okay. You can register next semester. Uh, doctor, but, uh, if I just uh, if I enter on campus. And it shows that uh, the seminar course, for example, the class changed from PNG to CAP to I can read I, I, I think I think on the canvas for the graduate uh, research seminar, uh, the location is CAP to We always have it. For me, it was uh, the ENG to I mean, yes, ENG to Yeah. Oh, sure. Um, Yes. That's okay, I will ask the department to make the change. Some, someone guided me. Some other students got confused uh, and went to the It was a student, uh, student board, some event was going on, so he said, yeah, so students came here and then went, so my ah, chance. Ah. That's why we, uh, we came. You went there. Yeah, How did you know that you should be we here? We entered on campus and it was written that the location changed. Okay, I think that when somebody inputs a location, they probably made some mistake. Because this this course always being cut to a two. Yeah. Okay, doctor, so there are just a note. If we can see the location of the class and campus, so we are just it's okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. 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 Diva will talk to us about that. Yeah. Okay. All right, if no more questions. Um, oh, yeah. So Christina actually want to mention something. There are two handouts here. One is uh, for 2023 scholarship opportunities. I think Adiva mentioned some of them, and you know you could take a look. That's open for all the graduate students and undergraduate and graduate students. And another handout here is safety pledge. That is from you, right? Yeah. Do you want to mention this? Yeah. So this is the safety pledge, and we're asking students to take the pledge. And you may have taken the pledge already with the link up there. This is a reminder, but we're going around to USF campus. Katarina's helping uh, promote pedestrian bicycle safety around campus and to do presentations. So uh, just definitely take this with you if you're interested in helping. I mean, it's a good volunteer opportunity to be a part of it too. All right. Thank you, Christina. That concludes today's seminar, and I look forward to seeing everybody next Friday. Thank you. Thank the.